Good morning, Eagles, and welcome to Season 14, Episode 78 of Eagle News. Today is Monday, February 1st, 2021. It's February, and for every newscast, we will share with you a bit of black history. Happy birthday, Lanston Hughes. He was born on February 1st, 1902. Lanston Hughes was an African-American writer whose poems, columns, novels, and plays made him a leading figure in the Harlem Renaissance of the 1920s. For our first video, let's check out an interview with Mrs. Meyer. Mrs. Meyer is a 7th grade science teacher. Let's roll it! Being a 7th grade science teacher, Mrs. Meyer, what are you teaching in class right now? Right now, we are covering um, our moon unit, so we're learning about the moon phases and why we have seasons and how the moon impacts tides and all about eclipses. How are you managing A day and B day students? So for this unit, we are trying something new, and we are actually doing a um, like a playlist, a moon playlist. So all the activities are online, and so kids can work on the same stuff that they would in class at home. They can do, so everybody's kind of doing the same thing right now. Affecting what you would normally do for this unit. So we can't do the hands-on things that we typically have been doing. Um, in the past, we've done, we've used Oreos for moon phases, and we had to give that up this year. We also do a, um, a fun, well, interesting activity where we put a ball in the middle of the room and then we, we revolve around the ball to um, draw the different moon phases so that we can see them and see how it changes and how many days it actually, actually lasts. And we can't do that this year either. So it's kind of sad because those are fun. Now we'll be interviewing a student from Ms. Myers' class about how he feels about the unit and how COVID is affecting his learning. How is COVID affecting how you are learning? Well, um, it gets kind of used to to get like it get it takes some time to get used to the schedule, but once you get the hang of it, you should do pretty good. How do you like what Mrs. Meyer is teaching right now? Uh, I I like it because it can be really interesting to learn about. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye. I'm Ellie. I'm Lena. Reporting for Eagle News. Thank you for your time, Mrs. Meyer. We appreciate it. Now let's head to headlines. Congratulations to Ella H in Grade Eight who will be recognized at the Scholastic Arts and Writing Awards for her memoir, Something Worth About Crying. She will be awarded the Silver Key Award and will be invited to the Scholastic Celebration Online, premiering Sunday, March 7, 2021. Girls Softball is coming up. For any 7th or 8th grade girls interested in playing softball, the meetings will be held on February 4th and February 5th during the advisory in the cafeteria. That's it for today's headlines. Now let's go over to Addie in the Eagle News Weather Station for today's weather. Thanks, Cami. Today in Powell, there's a high of 32 degrees and a low of 22 degrees. There's also going to be some snow showers. Let's head back to the newsroom to see what our next video is about. Thank you for that great weather report, Addie. For our next video, we'll be looking about some things happening around the world with Brooklyn. Check it out. Gavin the seal is a seal who sits on a paddleboard along the river Aran in the UK. Gavin is named after someone who worked as a lifeboatman with the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. He sits at the end of the paddleboard and enjoys the ride. He actually wasn't taught to paddleboard, so he just sits back and relaxes. Gavin even has a Facebook page in his honor. So Gavin might not be a pro seal paddleboarder, but he sure does enjoy the luxurious ride. Let's check out this next story about a pile of carrots. There was a giant pile of carrots dumped outside Goldsmiths College in the UK. 64,000 pounds of carrots were dumped on the university's campus on September 29th of this year. Some students climbed the pile and took pictures on the top. Others took some carrots from the pile home for a snack. Who dumped these carrots, you may ask? Well, it is the artist Rafael Perez Evans. He said it was to highlight the problem of food waste. All the carrots dumped that the students didn't take will be collected and used as animal food that, that had been rejected by the supermarkets. What would you do if you saw a giant pile of carrots? This next unbelievable story calls for a noodle lover. The top ramen company is looking for someone who loves their noodles to fill a new position. They will be the chief noodle officer. They will test and make new recipes with the ramen noodles. If you are chosen for this position, you will receive $10,000, a mentorship with the head of the company, and a 50-year supply of ramen products. If you're a noodle lover, you might want to check this job out. This next story is about a wooden boat that has been found after 27 years. Let's check it out. 
Have you ever discovered an old artifact? Well, while Lynn and Mike B. visited a remote beach in Wisconsin, they spotted something buried in the sand. A small wooden boat that had washed ashore had a message printed on it that read, I am traveling to the ocean. Please put me back in the water. The couple discovered it that it had been set in the water by a second grade class in 1993. They decided to put the boat back in the water to continue its journey. The last unbelievable story I will be covering is about a five-year-old boy who sent a baby Yoda doll to firefighters battling the Oregon wildfires. This five-year-old sent this doll as a friend in case they get lonely. Some people send the firefighters necessities that might come in handy, but not this kid. He sent a big thank you that was greatly appreciated by the firefighters. They took the doll everywhere. They even created a Facebook page for Yoda to provide updates on his travels. He has more than 50,000 followers. On the page, there's even a post of Baby Yoda drinking a cup of coffee. I'm Brooklyn with Eagle News, and thanks for watching these unbelievable events. Video Brooklyn, thank you for sharing those amazing stories with us. Now let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now let's look at our video of the week. Today is Monday, so that means it's time for our TikTok of the week. Lily and Maddie were here in the newsroom trying out their TikTok myths and tests. Let's go check it out. Hey guys, today we're going to be trying out TikTok trends and hacks. Let's go try out a couple. Great work, ladies. Please make sure if and when you try these things, you ask your parents first. It's now, now it's time, time for trivia. trivia. Let's head to the trivia studio with Kellen and Addie for today's trivia question. Thanks, Miley. Before we tell you today's question, let's take a look at the final scores for January trivia and reveal the winners. Congratulations to Mr. Nicolosi's classroom. Now on to the trivia question. Remember to text your answers to Mr. Meta to earn your points for today's question. The question is, name a reason a person might be up at 2 in the morning. Again, Again name a reason a person might be awake at 2 in the morning. Send in two answers to Mr. Meta to earn your points. It's Let's head back to Miley and Cami for our last video segment. For today's last video segment, let's check out Amelia Adelin and Olivia's video on dogs. Roll it! Do you think this dog is cute? Congrats, you might be a dog lover! Woo! We here at Eagle News love dogs! From a man's best friend to a service dog, dogs are a fun way to lighten up someone's day. Here are some of the top breeds from 2020. The most popular dog in the U.S. is the Labrador Retriever. These dogs have a natural light tan color to their short coats. This dog is perfect for all ages. Secondly, there are German Shepherds. These big dogs have soft hearts and a mighty multicolored coat alongside with perky ears. Number three is a Frenchie. I think they should have got number one because I have a Frenchie, but whatever. They have short snouts and they are come in a bunch of different colors. 
Surprisingly, only 67% of people have dogs. The reason why so many people have dogs is probably because they're so loyal. Let's head over to Mrs. Roberts on her new dog and why she loves her so much. What kind of dog is, was the dog you We got a great Pyrenees Lab Mix, which is called a Pyridor. Apparently, I didn't know that was a thing, but it's a combination <laughs> of those two breeds. So she's a tall lab is what she looks like. Her name is Roxy, or when she's in trouble, it's Roxanne. <laughs> Um, the highlight is that she's just fun. She's obedient, um, so she can, you know, listen and be mannerly, but she's also has a lot of energy to play. She likes all people. Why do you think so many people love dogs? Gosh, I think probably the best part is they're just loyal. Um, you can be having a bad day and they're just always happy wow. to see you. So they make you, um, feel loved and, you know, they're good companions when you need somebody um, to be by your side. Now we're going to talk about the kinds of dogs that we have. I have two dogs, Everly, she is two years old, she's amazing, and Lola, who is 12, almost 12 years old, she's an old grandma, but I love her too. Um, my dog's name is non-existent, and I have three dogs. Two of them are Samoyeds. They're big, white, fluffy dogs, and their names are Dallas and Rocky. And then I have one small Pomeranian named Princess. That's all we have time for about dogs, eagles. Bye! Bye. <laughs>